We will not bow down to injustice. We will not bow down to exploitation. I'm going to stand. I'm going to stand. I'm Keith Findlay. I was one of Maurice's lawyers. In 1998, when my partner John Prey and I created the Wisconsin Innocence Project, we'd never heard of Maurice Carter. He was, in fact, one of our first requests for assistance when we first started our project. And uh, he, he came to us by way of the New York Innocence Project. He'd written to Barry Sheck in New York asking for help, but because his case didn't involve any DNA, they sent his case to us in Wisconsin knowing that we were just getting started and that we would work on cases without DNA. And they said, we can't do this case because it doesn't have any DNA, but you've got to take a look at this case. This, this case this just some, This case is so wrong, somebody's got to do something about it. So we, we set about trying to do something about it, and we quickly learned, and learned repeatedly over the next six years as we worked with Maurice, some pretty remarkable things about this man and about his life. We first learned how horribly he had been wronged by the Michigan criminal justice system. I can, I can honestly say this was one of the worst and clearest cases of injustice that we have seen, and that we have seen since then. The more we dug and investigated, the clearer it became that the criminal justice system had failed and was continuing to fail Maurice Carter. We learned that this poor black man from Gary, Indiana, locked away in a prison cell in Michigan, had touched and inspired people throughout Michigan, throughout Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin, Canada, the entire world. My name is Doug Chapkus. I live in Spring Lake, Michigan, and I was a friend of Maurice Carter. We called each other brother. My family became his family. I could spend my time condemning the state of Michigan, which must accept the blame for mishandling the Carter case from beginning to end. That includes both legal and medical issues and we will clear his name. I would love to spend my time telling how this quiet, unassuming, gentle, and for many years unknown man from Gary, Indiana, became a model of patience, love, and compassion to thousands of people around the world. But I want to spend my brief moments explaining the dream of Maurice Carter. Many people think that innocent, the small organization that I operate, assisting families and friends of the wrongly convicted, was Maurice Carter's dream. That is not correct. I merely implemented Innocent as a feeble personal effort to show him that his dream can and will become a reality. Maurice and I shared our thoughts about his vision as recently as a few weeks ago. His dream was a far larger concept than that of Innocent. He foresaw the day when we would have an operation that would include a bona fide Innocence Project in Western Michigan, using the pre-law and journalism students of our many fine colleges and universities to investigate cases in cooperation with a consortium of all of the law schools in the state of Michigan. In his mind, ours would be the model Innocence Project for all <laughs> others in the country. He had a genuine concern for prisoners who, upon release, needed psychological help as they entered the mainstream and needed vocational training so they could be gainfully employed. So we planned to do something about it. He wanted seminars for employers to explain that former prisoners were worth hiring. He was also sensitive to the victims of crime and felt that we should be involved in restorative justice which emphasizes healing the wounds of victims, offenders, and communities caused or revealed by criminal behavior. So as we dreamed, we dreamed of an umbrella project called the Maurice H. Carter Institute for Justice, which would not only include innocent and an innocence project, but also programs to assist newly released prisoners and a restorative justice organization. That was the Maurice Carter dream. And it may take many years and millions of dollars for its implementation. With God's help, in whom he had such a strong faith, 
I am committed to converting dream to reality, just as he was committed to converting a negative into a positive. And if you have any doubt about our success with this project, think back on how many people doubted that Maurice would see freedom. No one will ever know how many people have been touched by the life of Maurice Carter. And only God knows how many will be touched by his dream. New trial. The judge said no. News 3 I-Team reporter Abby Boudreau joins us now with a side of the story that the jury never got to hear. Well, the prosecutor's case was based on eyewitness testimony, but one woman who witnessed the crime firsthand feels she never got to tell the jury what she saw. Tonight, she shares details from the crime scene, key information that never came out in trial. Here comes the story of Maurice Carter. Maurice is a kind, gentle, dear, caring man. I love him. Growing old in prison, he's serving a life sentence for the shooting of an off-duty police officer. Maurice Carter maintains his innocence. It was a rush, rush day. The week of Christmas. Crowded downtown, uh, a lot of snow on the ground. She was a store clerk at Harbor Records and Wigs in Benton Harbor. She was the only one in the store when a man walked in and asked for an album. He wanted me to turn around. I said, this man is going to rob me. So I kept just talking, and then the little bell, ding, ding, and the couple came inside. Off-duty police officer Thomas Shadler and his wife entered the store. Only moments later, gunfire. I see this barrel, this gun, and he's shooting the guy in the back of the head. Officer Shaler was shot five to six times in the back of his head and neck. Just pointing the gun right at the gentleman, just holding it, firing it, just shooting it. You know, just looking rage. Shadler survived, but the gunman had fled and was nowhere to be found. Within hours of the shooting, police officers questioned several men in the area. One of them was Maurice Carter. The store clerk, Gwen Baird, uh, indicated that this wasn't the person. They had the wrong person. So officers let Carter go. Investigators were stumped. Neither the officer nor his wife recognized the shooter. And Shaler said in an article the following day, he did not pay special attention to the man. The only witness, the only legitimate witness to the crime, as any white eyewitness expert will tell you, is Gwen Baird. Two years passed and still no arrest. Not until 1975, when a jailhouse snitch fed police some information. He indicated to the police that he could help them solve the shooting of Officer Shadler. And so he gave the name of Maurice Carter. Big news in Benton Harbor. Gary Mann accused his officer's assailant. Carter's photo was printed on the front page. I said, you guys have the wrong man. That's not the guy who shot Tom Shadler. One week later, the police conducted a lineup. This time, the Shadlers both identified Carter as the shooter. But Gwen Baird was not invited to the lineup. Maurice Carter is an innocent man and the truth doesn't came out. The trial was set for May 1976. The informant took the stand. Prosecutors counted on him to testify that Maurice Carter was the shooter, but that's not what happened. He recanted and then was charged uh, with perjury and sent to prison for that. The prosecution's star witness charged with perjury. Now their case relied solely on eyewitness testimony. There was no physical evidence linking anyone to the crime. I went to the trial. They had me on the stand once. The trial lasted a week. They never, ever called me back on the stand. It should have been pointed out to the jury that her testimony was the most important, and she could say that he was not the shooter. There never got to tell the jury her story. The jury's verdict, guilty. Carter was sentenced to life in prison. He's now 59 years old. You've got an innocent man who was wrongly convicted who has already served more than enough time, who, who there is no earthly reason to keep the man in prison. Here comes the story of Eric Kane. In the atmosphere of those times in 1966, very much resembles the atmosphere that's taking place in this community today. Reuben Hurricane Carter, no relation to Maurice, was freed from prison after being wrongly convicted. Now he fights for Maurice's freedom. 
That brings us to today in court. Officer Shaler's wife sat in the courtroom as Carter's lawyers asked the judge for a new trial. But they didn't get the answer they were hoping for. I cannot in good conscience and without violating my oath of office grant this motion. And neither press releases nor poison pen letters can change the law, which I must follow. Longtime friend Doug Chapkis says he will be the one to tell Maurice the news. I'm not looking forward to that call. But uh, he's realist. He, he expects this more than I did. He did not expect anything fair. And as for Gwen Baird, it appears a jury will never hear her side of the story. When is justice going to come, you know? When is, this, when is he going to get set free? The judge made it clear he did not want to second-guess the jury's 1976 decision. Carter's lawyers say they're hoping the governor will grant a pardon, which could be his last chance at being released. Carter's doctors say his health is failing so time. The man who was able to get his life sentence commuted due to medical reasons is dead. Maurice Carter was convicted of shooting and injuring an off-duty Benton Harbor police officer back in 1973. He died of complications from hepatitis C. He was 60. Carter was released from prison in July since then. He's been hospitalized four times and he spent a number of weeks at a nursing home in Ottawa County. For years, Carter claimed he was innocent and has a number of supporters who will still fight to clear his name. This case is very much alive yet. Yeah. How are you going to be able to do that? I mean, there's is there DNA evidence. How are you going to... No, there's no DNA evidence, but there are people who are alive yet who know who did it. There have been a number of appeals in the Carter case. All have been denied. The state Supreme Court is right now considering another appeal. I uh, came here because I wanted to come here. And I wanted to come here to let you all know that I am truly, truly grateful for your love, your support. We encourage doing my struggle for my freedom. Isn't God wonderful? Support the legacy of Maurice Carter to help ensure truth and justice in the American legal system.